I wrote on Philomena because it was nominated for an Academy Award. It's a wonderful film, but I think you could easily walk out of Philomena seeing it the first time and just say, well, that was kind of an anti-Christian movie. You know, you could think it was really hard on the church and, and just walk away from it thinking, boy, that was anti-Christian. And really, it's a deeply Christian movie. And if you understood the language of symbols, symbols, um, you would see it. And so it was really important to me to point that out because there are two symbols that bracket the, the movie. One at the very beginning, one at the end. And they tell the whole biblical story in symbol, if you understand those two symbols, okay? So the movie begins with this young couple and it's like this one moment of beauty at a fair. She's very young and they meet and they're, it's just this moment of beauty. And then they get carried away and have premarital sex. And that's where the first symbol comes in because as they're having it, the candy apple that Philomena was eating with the bites out of it falls to the ground. And there you have the symbol of Genesis 3, the apple with the bite out of it, okay? So what happens right afterward just goes right to Genesis. It's like she's, her father puts her out, takes her to the convent, disowns her. Um, the nuns take her in, but she has great pain in childbirth. That's the curse in Genesis 3. And then she is eventually separated very early from this child, and it's a death. She does not know if he's alive or living or what happened to him. And for 50 years, she has this secret. She keeps it totally to herself. And the number 50, here's another symbol, kind of a number symbol. If you don't understand 50 biblically, you, you would miss that. But it's on his 50th birthday that she can't keep this inside anymore, this secret. Well, what's important about 50? 50 is the number of Jubilee in the Bible. It's uh, where God said to the Israelites, uh, on the 50th year, everything will be restored. If you'd gotten into debt, if you'd lost your land, if you whatever you had lost, there was to be a restoration of that loss on the 50th year. So, on this 50th birthday, she breaks open the story, and she, Philomena, and Martin go on this journey. And it, it's a real hero's journey because they're both at a loss in life. She's lost her son, she's brokenhearted, she's had this secret. Martin has lost his job, and they represent two broken people, man and woman, wealthy, well-off, working, average working class woman. They represent kind of the, the whole fulcrum of life of men and women, and they, they go as this kind of Adam and Eve figure back on this journey. And um, it really is a hero journey. They leave their ordinary world, they cross a threshold, they go into a special world, and they're being, uh, they're tested and they're going down, down, down into the ordeal, which is finding out what really happened to Philomena's son. And they do. They discover that he died of AIDS and he's dead, but the journey doesn't end there. They press on uh, to see you know, she, she really needs the, the closure. Did he love me? Did he ever try and find me, you know? Um, and so the journey leads them right back to where it started at the convent where all this took place in the beginning. And there is this great climatic scene where they confront the nun that was involved in the selling of the child. And um, the nun and false religion is really exposed for what it is. Okay, but Philomena and Martin have both been transformed by the journey they've been on. Philomena, the, the naive kind of religious lady that was kind of like a childlike religious that was obedient to, you know, those above her without questioning. She's, her faith has changed greatly. And Martin, who was a lapsed Catholic, who really didn't believe in anything, his faith has changed greatly. They 
both have been transformed on this. And they come to this confrontation and Philomena discovers where her son is buried and she goes out to see his grave while Martin confronts the nun and then he buys the second symbol. And this is the key. He buys a small figure of Christ and it's got it the arms of Christ are outstretched like this. It's the loving Christ. Okay. So he takes it out and he puts it on the grave for Philomena, gives her this gift. So the movie is bracketed by the Genesis apple and the figure of Christ, like in Revelation. It's the Bible from Genesis to Revelation. That's the story. Because the story is about restoration, about life, about restoring. Um, the heart of the son to the mother and the mother to the son. There is a restoration there. And it's about two lives that were broken, being healed and transformed as they went on this journey. And it's about them entering into a friendship and a love that they never had. And it's about Isaiah 61 the great chapter on the year of Jubilee. It's what Jesus proclaims in Luke chapter 4 that is the, the message of his ministry is to come heal the brokenhearted, set the captive free, release the prisoners, and bring in the favorable year of the Lord. And that is exactly what's happened to Martin and Philomena. So it's a, a powerful movie that brackets the whole story of the Bible because what Christ is doing is undoing the fall, undoing all the brokenness, undoing everything in Genesis 3 and the curse. That is what he came to undo. And that is exactly what has happened in this movie. So I think it's powerful. It is a deeply Christian movie in that sense. Um, it may be anti-established religion or people people that are hypocritical, like the nun who is unveiled for a bitter and ugly heart, who never forgave, but it reveals the great transformation in Philomena that she can forgive and act like selling her son without batting an eye. She has now become the true Christian figure in that movie, and Martin is on his way because he recognizes it in her. And so it's a beautiful film, one you should see.